Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. O Son of the Heavenly Father, it was pleasing in your eyes to become the Son of the Virgin Mary. And so the Archangel Gabriel came to announce the good news bringing peace to the Father, to the one who is blessed among all women. Prepare us to celebrate your glorious birth with joy and with gladness, that we may raise glory and thanks to you, to your Father and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Peace be with the church and her children. The Father, the Holy Lamb, to the praise, glory, and honor of the Most Holy Trinity. Let us raise glory, honor, and praise to the Father who sent Gabriel to Nazareth as a messenger, and to the Son who dwelt in the Virgin Mary as the good news, and to the Spirit who sanctified her and accomplished this wondrous mystery. To the good one be glory and honor on this feast and all the days of our lives, now and forever. Amen. Glory to you, O exalted one, for you chose to live among us. You are the power who dwelt in the pure Virgin Mary and appeared from her as God incarnate. Today we cry out, proclaiming, Blessed are you, O Mary, because the Son of God has chosen you as his mother. Blessed are you, O Mary, because of you Adam has been freed. Blessed are you, O Mary, because you are the glory of the nations and the pride of all generations. Now, O word of God, we ask you with the fragrance of this incense and in your mercy to pardon our faults and give us the gifts of your Spirit. Grant security to your flock and peace to your monasteries and convents, piety to the priests and purity to deacons, dignity to the elderly and generosity to parents, restraint to the youth and a good education to children. Sanctify monks and nuns and spread truth and love throughout the world. Grant rest to the departed in your eternal kingdom that we may raise glory and thanks to you, to your Father and to your Holy Spirit now and forever.
ascend, and the Lord's power from on high would come down and dwell in you. He will reign in Jacob's house, and his kingdom will not end. All the peoples on the earth will sing praise from age to age to the Savior who is God. O pure Virgin Mary, you are the cloud who has dropped down dew upon the world, filling it with the sweet fragrance of Christ. On this feast of your Annunciation, implore your only Son with us to accept our incense and to fill us with his heavenly graces, that we may thank him, his Father, and his Holy Spirit now, all and forever. Kaddishat aloho kaddishat Hayatono kaddishat Lama yuto Itrahana Kaddishat aloho O Lord, sanctify our minds and purify our consciences, that we may praise you with purity and listen to your holy scriptures. To you be glory forever. From the Father an angel has been sent to earth this day to announce to the Virgin you will bear the one who says. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Glory to the Lord of Paul and the Apostles. May the mercy of God descend upon the reader, the listeners, and upon this parish and her children forever. In human terms, I say that no man can annul or amend even a human will once ratified. Now the promises were made to Abraham and to his seed. It does not say, and to his, to his seed as referring to many, but as referring to one, and to your seed, who is Christ. This is what I mean. The law, which came 430 years afterward, does not annul a covenant previously ratified by God so as to cancel out the promise. For if the inheritance comes from the law, it is no longer from the promise, but God bestowed it upon Abraham through a promise. 
What then the law? It was added for transgressions until the seed came to whom the promise had been made. It was promulgated by angels at the hand of a mediator. Now there is no mediator when only one party is involved, but God is one. Is the law then opposed to the promise of God? Of course not. For if a law had been given that could bring life, then righteousness would in reality have come from the law. But Scripture has confined all things under the power of sin, that through faith in Jesus Christ, the promise might be given to those who believe. Praise be to God always. Before the proclamation of the gospel of our Savior announcing life for our souls, we offer this incense and ask for your mercy, O Lord. Peace be with you. From the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Luke, who proclaimed life to the world, let us listen to the proclamation of life and salvation for our souls. The evangelist Luke writes, In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, he said, Hail, highly favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at what was said, and she pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Then the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you shall conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He shall be great and shall be called the Son of the Most High, for the Lord God shall give him the throne of David his father, and he shall rule over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom there shall be no end. But Mary said to the angel, How can this be done, as I do not know man? And the angel said to her in reply, The Holy Spirit shall come upon you, and the power of the Most High shall overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born shall be called holy, the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is now the sixth month for her who was called barren. For nothing shall be impossible for God. And Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. And then 
the angel departed from her. This is the truth, peace be with you. But scripture has confined all to sin. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Of course, in the modern world, when we use the word faith, it has a sentimental sense to it, sent a sense, experience, sentimental, emotional, something that is filtered through me, myself. So then when we speak about faith, it's something which most people in the world in general these days see something as being just completely personal and basically how I interpret things. It's based purely upon feelings. And of course, if that's the idea of faith, then St. Paul's letter to the Romans, his letter to the Galatians talking about the promise being made by God to Abraham, and then 500 years, God establishing the law of Mount Sinai. Talking about the faith of Abraham then makes no sense. Because in the, modern, in the modern idea then, Abraham's faith is just his personal thing. Yes, he was gonna kill his son, well that's nuts. And so this is the way they interpret the story. They don't understand what is actually happening and what faith actually is. Faith is an objective reality. It is not a personal, internal, sentimental niff, just some nice internal feeling that I go to on occasion because we like to gather and we like to we see each other, we give hugs and that's it, and that's church. It's not church. You can do that at the Elks Club. You can do that anywhere. Faith is something that is transformative. This is why St. Paul comes back and again and again to Abraham. Abraham's life is transformed by what God speaks to him. But that speaking is something objective. It's why even in our language, the word faith, it's originally a Latin word, fides, F-I-D-E-S. It is the origin also of our word fidelity. Because in Latin, the word fides doesn't just mean theological faith, that's why we have to add an adjective to it, theological faith, because fides also means precisely faithfulness, loyalty, it's engagement with some other person, some other reality outside of ourselves. And so we don't need to go on about Abraham and the law because St. Paul is just basically continuing in this letter to the Galatians what we considered last week. So if we look at faith in the idea of the modern world, it doesn't really do anything to us. We do something to what we call religion, where we spin it into our own little personal thing. And that's why in the world, the people we work with, where we're at, if we think and act and choose just as they think and choose and act, it's the, the clearest indication that we do not have the faith. Because it means that the principles that are in our mind are exactly the same as they function and live by also. That is not the story of Abraham. That is not the faith. So the question becomes, well then what is faith? What is theological faith? First of all, as you know from your catechism, first of all, it is a gift. It is something that is given to an individual by the transcendent Holy One. It is first an illumination of the intellect, which means that what theological faith is, first of all, it is a vision to see things differently, ultimately from the perspective of God himself. So it is first an illumination of the mind, and because it transforms that vision, it also has an influence upon the will to be able to make the ascent of faith, 
We do not believe the faith because, again, that it's sentimentality, it makes me feel nice, I like Christmas. We believe because it is a vision given to us by a light which moves the will to allow us to assent to the fact that this rabbi of Nazareth is truly God. Always remember the fact that everyone who saw Jesus of Nazareth saw nothing but a man. There were things that happened around him that were unusual, the healings in that, the exorcisms. But the Pharisees and the other Jews also performed exorcisms. It's a huge amount around our Lord. Okay, so there's more. But the man that they spoke to, they saw nothing other than a man. The faith is what allows us to see first. But because it also influences the will, it allows us to make that act of will, that ascent, that this rabbi of Nazareth is God incarnate. It is why what you see in the modern world of religion has just descended into pure sentimentality and emotionalism. It has really no objective reality anymore, except that we kind of have a generic agreement that Jesus has something to do with it. And this is a great shame, because when we don't understand the illumination of the mind and the strengthening of the will, then we never understand the story of Abraham and why Abraham is the paradigm, the exemplar of faith. And as I mentioned to you last week, that for the fathers of the church, when our Lord comes and institutes a new covenant, replacing and perfecting the old covenant of Mount Sinai, he's actually doing nothing other than restoring what had been the faith of Abraham 500 years before Moses. That's what all this back and forth is about. And again, that given to Abraham, it is unilateral. God just promised these things to Abraham. Abraham doesn't do anything that God then gives him these promises. These are just done by God during Abraham's life. Whereas we've mentioned before on Mount Sinai, it is bilateral. It is, is, is this an agreement? Moses mediating between the God of the mountain and the people of Israel who have just been freed from slavery. The question becomes bilateral. Do you agree to follow these observances and these teachings, these words? And if you do, bilaterally, I will be your God. It's a bilateral agreement. But you notice that our Lord at the Last Supper, he just simply takes the cup and takes the bread of the Last Supper and says, this is the, the new and eternal covenant made in my blood. Again, it is unilateral. He doesn't ask the apostles. He doesn't ask anyone around about what he's doing with this new covenant. But it is also the eternal covenant. And it is a restoration of the faith of Abraham of 2,000 years before. So we go from unilateral promises to 500 years later, 1,500 years of bilateral contractual agreement between God and one people on the face of the earth, and then the unilateral again to all of the nations of the earth fulfilling the promises of Abraham. When we understand that, we have two things then. One, we understand that objective reality of the faith. And you either have the faith or you don't have the faith. You either have been transformed to see and to assent to the word of God, or you don't, which is why we have thousands of varieties of Christianity, because they don't have the faith, objectively speaking, and they make up versions of something that has to do with Jesus of Nazareth. But that is not the faith. The church has always spoken of one faith, one faith, one Lord, one baptism, straight from the epistles of St. Paul. But it also has this notion then of the unilater unilateralness for us to understand in the second place what Mary of Nazareth is doing in the Annunciation. And that's just what I leave you with. When this angel enters in to speak 
to this young woman, and she's probably only 16, 17, maybe 18 years old. Remember again, the gospel is a story of young people accomplishing the salvation of the world. That when the angel comes into her, she hasn't been doing anything. She hasn't, she hasn't been doing anything specifically why God on this day sends the angel Gabriel. This again is God's unilateral sending of the angel. That's why St. Luke emphasizes it. The angel is sent by God to Nazareth, to this virgin. She is married to St. Joseph. We will talk about that over these months. There's a lot of confusion of how this actually works. But the great aspect that we see here is this woman has the faith. She is an individual who sees things in a different way. Remember Zachary of last week, he has the faith, but it's weak. So on a human level, he asks for some kind of a sign. Our Lady asks a question which almost sounds exactly the same. How will I know this? But she's not punished or anything in any way because it is a question not of dubiousness or doubtfulness. It's a question, well, how does this happen? Because I have, as it says in the scriptures, I mean, you know, the new translations, it throws me off because whoever translated this actually gave their own interpretation. It's not actually the direct scriptures. Our Lady says, how shall this happen as I do not know man? And that's when it gives the priest the chance to explain these Hebraic phrases instead of just giving an interpretation of the scriptures. This knowledge of knowing, it's exactly the same foundation as faith. Abraham knew God and knowing God because of that transformation of the mind. But the knowledge has always been there. From the book of Genesis, it talks about Abraham, or Adam knowing his wife Eve. And then there's a baby born. Oh, look, so knowing means a lot of different things. And in this instance, that's all she says. She clearly announces to the angel, which of course the angel is certainly aware of, just announces the fact of her, her life choice of virginity. She's not going to have relations with her husband Joseph. Again, we'll talk about that later on. But that's all she says to the angel. But we're not going to have any children. It'd be different if he came in and they were expecting as a married couple to have a child saying, well, one of your children is really going to be special. But that's not what he says. And her answer to it is saying, but we have embraced as the anawim. Remember the word for later, the anawim. She has embraced the spiritual movement in Israel along with her husband, Joseph. And that's why she just says to the angel, we don't have relations. I do not know man, meaning I'm never going to know man. And that's why he just foregoes that. But this is again the unilateral promise of God, that the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, will come upon you. To every Jew hearing it, it's an echo of the book of Genesis, the Spirit of God who hovered over the abyss in creation. That the Spirit of God shall come upon you. And so all of this aspect is the faith of this woman. It is something for us to both admire in many ways, in its perfection, it's unattainable to us to that degree. But it is something that, in its essence, we have the same possession by theological faith. And that's why once this angel basically gives her, there is a sign, your cousin. Your cousin, remember your old cousin, she's expecting. And this is six months now. He doesn't tell her to go see her. She just says that this is happening now. And we'll talk about that next week with the visitation. But you notice that the, the angel, the last thing he says is, there's nothing impossible with God. Your cousin who was sterile against her wishes now has a child. You who for the service of God have embraced celibacy, you too will also have a child because nothing is impossible to God. And then we see, we know the objective reality of that faith, of that vision, which transfigures and illuminates the intellect and strengthens the will to assent to that word of God because of her beautiful and magnificent response, behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord.
Behold, I am a slave to God. I am here only to serve. Let it be done to me as you have spoken. And then the angel just leaves. There's no further response. This is a magnificent example of, of faith, but it is meant to be echoed with our scripture readings to understand that it is a restoration of a promise, of life-giving promise, unilaterally made to Abraham 2,000 years before. Its restoration in a historical moment begins with this young woman in Nazareth. So may her prayers be a rampart to us always. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not me, consubstantial with the Father, to him all things for me, for us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven. And is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to charge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is the door and the Lord of God, who has spoken to us. We believe in one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. We confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and we look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Itelvot madem heida loho, valvota loho dam chale tayot, veinem sugo tayvota keul al baita chveskudem chayet no or kodesho. Now you have sheets for the transfer hymn for this week of the announcement to the Blessed Virgin in your pews.
Almighty Lord and God, you accepted the offerings of our ancestors. Now accept these offerings that your children have brought to you out of their love for you and for your holy name. Shower your spiritual blessings upon them, and in place of their earthly gifts, grant them life and your imperishable kingdom. As we remember our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ and his plan of salvation for us, we recall upon this offering all those who have pleased God from Adam to this day, especially Mary, the Blessed Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, the Chosen One, our Holy Father, Saint Mary, and Saint Jude. Remember, O God, the children of the Holy Church, our fathers and mothers, and our brothers and sisters, both the living and the departed, especially those for whom this sacrifice is offered for the intentions of all the members of this parish. Remember also all those who share with us today in this offering. Continue then with the anaphora of St. John Chrysostom on page 876. 876. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Lord God and Father, holy and glorious is your name. You deliver those who love you from all that is contrary to your will. May we who have remained in your divine love be made worthy to give one another the greeting of peace with a holy kiss. May we always speak words of peace, think of peace, and work for peace. Through the grace of your only Son and his love for all people, we raise glory to you and to your living Holy Spirit, now and forever. Peace to you, o holy altar of God. Peace to the holy mysteries placed upon you. Peace to you, o server of the Holy Spirit. Let us give the greeting of peace to our neighbor, with love and faith that are pleasing to God. O Lord, on high, hidden from all creation, you are peace, reconciling those who are enemies. You are forgiveness to those who sin, you are comfort to those who are sorrowful. Open the door of your mercy to our petitions, and in the abundance of your grace accept our prayers. Make us children and heirs of your kingdom, through the grace of your only Son and his love for all people, and through your Holy Spirit, now and forever. O oh Lord, you are adored by all angels, bless you, humanity exalts you, and all creation glorifies you. 
Look upon your children who call out to you. Purity and holiness, may we offer you an acceptable sacrifice, that we may raise glory to you, to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The love of God the Father, and the grace of the only begotten Son, and the communion and indwelling of the Holy Spirit, be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. And with your spirit. Let us lift up our thoughts, our minds, and our hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord with reverence and worship him with humility. Truly it is right and just to thank, adore, glorify, and bless the majesty of the one consubstantial Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, a majesty that does not need our glory or become greater with our things. O Lord, those who sing your praises are countless, and they cry out with angelic voices, and with sweet melodies proclaiming. Glory to you, O God, the Heavenly Father, for you have exalted our weak human nature. In your mercy you sent your only Son into the world for our salvation. He dawned from the Holy Virgin like a ray of light from a bright cloud. He took the form of a slave, yet truly he is the Son of your Majesty. He willingly became man to make us divine. He was born from a woman's womb, that we may be born again from a spiritual womb. He became our brother, so that through his grace we may become your children and theirs. He took us from being slaves and made us your children. He promised us a share in the reward that allows us to call you Abba. He cleansed us from our sins with his precious blood that he poured out for us. For he is your only son. Hurry, hey, a lay song. Wabiamo howed up them hushro de lema bed haye. And Sabel Lahamabida, Cody Shanto, O Barahu Kodesh. Waxo ya beltarmita, Cordo Mara. Sabahola mehne. Kul <laughs> Alcosa Domsi Homen Hamro Homen Mayo Barahu Kodesh Uyabel Talmita Kado Mara Sabish Tower Mehene Kulho Hono Denita Dino Dila Dia Tiki Hadato Dachlo faikun, wachlov sagie, mete shadu meti hel. Kosoyan, haume wa hoyan alam alamin. Do this in memory of me. Each time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you remember my death until I come again. God who 
can comprehend that you willingly emptied yourself of your divine glory, who can explain your miraculous birth from a virgin, who can repay you for your saving passion which you freely endured, who can praise your plan of salvation for us. We can only ask of you, a lover of all people, that the sacrifice which we have offered be accepted on your altar in heaven, the dwelling place of your hidden divinity in the company of all the angels and saints. Through this sacrifice may we be worthy of the forgiveness of our sins. When you come to judge the living and the dead, do not pass judgment upon us, nor deny us, saying, I do not know you. On that glorious and fearful day, do not separate us from you, nor cast us out of your paradise to a place of weeping and gnashing of teeth. Rather, because of your holy name by which we have been called, look with mercy upon us. In your compassion you have made us worthy of the gift of your forgiving body and blood. So make us worthy to be one with you in holiness, as you are one with your Father. For this your church implores you, and through you and with you implores your Father, saying, O Lord, as we, your sinful children, receive your graces, we thank you for them, and because of them, we praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we possess our faith in you, and we ask you, have compassion on us, O God, have mercy on us, and hear us. Manin Morio, Manin Morio, that this bread, the body of Christ our God, be for us a pledge of the life to come. A body that grants us the everlasting joys of heaven, the body that renews our souls and bodies, a body that purifies us of all sin for eternal life. Amen. And that the mixture in this chalice, the blood of Christ our God, be a blood that gives new life to those who receive it, a blood that guides us to the safe harbors and the dwellings of light. A blood that renews our souls and bodies, a blood that purifies us of all sin for eternal life. Amen. O Lord, in your great mercy, when this body and blood is mingled with our bodies and souls, grant that it may be for the pardon of faults, of forgiveness of sins, and for the everlasting joy an eternal life with all your saints. Amen. We offer you, Lord God, Amen. this pure and holy offering for your holy Catholic and Apostolic Church, which you have redeemed. Gather her children into unity, love, and faith, and guide them in peace and security. We offer it for the pure bishops of the true faith, Francis, the Pope of Rome, Bashara Peter, our Patriarch of Antioch, Gregory John, our Bishop, the Venerable Priests, the Chaste Deacons, the Pure Subdeacons, and all the Orders of the Church. Teach them the Word of Truth, so that they may spread it faithfully. With justice and holiness, may they care for the flock that you have entrusted to them. Give them the proper means to accomplish your will, and grant them a long life. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor and the dejected, for orphans and widows, for the sick and the distressed, and for those tempted by evil spirits, be the guardian and refuge of their lives. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. 
Remember the Holy Fathers, prophets, apostles, preachers, evangelists, martyrs, and confessors, especially the holy, glorious, and blessed ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. John the Baptist, the messenger and forerunner, who witnessed the betrothal of your Holy Church to your Son, glorious St. Stephen, the Archdeacon and First Martyr, and all who have pleased you and professed your name, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all the faithful departed who have gone to you from this altar and from every place throughout the world, grant them rest in your heavenly dwellings with all your saints, and in your mercy forgive our sins and theirs. O Lord, do not deprive us of your mercy, but keep us in the palm of your hand, lest we fall and go astray, so that we may walk on your paths, follow your ways, and do your will. Forgive us and our departed, and pardon all sins and transgressions, hidden and seen, committed with or without full knowledge. Make us worthy of a faithful Christian death that is pleasing to you, and join us to your righteous ones and to those who have done your will, that in us and in all things your blessed name may be glorified with the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and of your living Holy Spirit, now and forever. O Lord, and you are the pleasing oblation who offered yourself for us. You are the forgiving sacrifice who offered yourself to your Father. You are the high priest who offered yourself as the Lamb. Through your mercy, may our prayer rise up in incense, sense, which we can offer to your Father through you, to you, you glory. O Lord, our Lord, you sent your only Son, who is the radiance of your eternity, and he accomplished his plan of salvation for us, that we may come to you. May we call upon you with the prayer that he taught his holy disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, to the us the kingdom, the power, and the glory of the angels. Yes, O merciful Lord, we ask for your compassion. By your grace, make us worthy that your glorious name may be made holy in us that your kingdom come to assist us in our weakness, and that your will dwell within us. Deliver us from all difficult temptations. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, with your only Son and your Holy Spirit, now and forever.
Peace be with you. O oh Lord God, you are good and the lover of all people. Look upon those who bow their heads before your majesty and bless them with every spiritual blessing. Do not turn us away when we approach your divine and holy gifts. And let us not be guilty of unworthily receiving the body and blood of your only Son. Rather, make us worthy to share in your holy and life-giving mysteries with purity. We may raise glory and thanks to you, to your only Son, and to your good and Holy Spirit, now and forever. The grace of the Most Holy Trinity, eternal and consubstantial, be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. Holy gifts for the holy, with perfection, purity, and sanctity. One Holy Father, one Holy Son, one Holy Spirit. Blessed be the name of the Lord, for he is one in heaven and on earth. To him be glory forever. Make us worthy, O Lord God, so that our bodies may be sanctified by the Lord of God, and our souls purified.
Again and again we thank you, O Lord, and raise glory to you for giving us your body to eat and your living blood to drink. O lover of all people, have mercy on us.
Lord Jesus, you have made us worthy to share in your holy body and in the cup of salvation. How can we repay you for these your gifts and graces and for your goodness? As you have called us to approach this life-giving banquet, make us worthy, so that your body may be mingled with our bodies and your blood with our souls, for the pardon of faults, the forgiveness of sins, and eternal life. You are blessed and your kingdom is holy. We raise glory to you, to your Father, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you. Amen. O God the Father, we bow before you and we entrust ourselves to your care. We ask you, imploring your mercy, to rest your right hand, full of blessings upon us. Assist us, protect us, bless us, and sanctify us by the life-giving cross of your only Son. We glorify and honor you, your only Son, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, my beloved brothers and sisters, with the nourishment and blessings you have received from the forgiving altar of the Lord. May the blessing of the Most Holy Trinity accompany you, the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the one God, to whom be glory forever.